Hi guys, welcome back to my project box. Today we want to take a look at this um, LED filament bulb. This one is the filament style which sort of mimics a traditional incandescent light bulb. Um, this particular one is a little bit special in that it's a smart bulb. And the reason I'm so interested in it is I would really like to know how they fit all the electronics inside that makes it smart. So how the Wi-Fi guts of it works. So I think what we'll do is we'll set it up quickly so you can see how it works with the app. And then we'll get to the really interesting stuff. I want to see what's inside this little bugger. Because I think what's inside here is going to be really interesting. Certainly they would have to miniaturize the power supply and um, the Wi-Fi module, everything right down so it can fit in here. So I'm quite curious about that. Anyway, stick with me and then we'll have a look. So um, let's see if we can pair this bulb to the Wi-Fi network. So I've got my little trusty uh, socket base with the switch in it. So we'll put our Wi-Fi filament bulb straight in there so it can neatly fit into our Euro socket. And then we'll, uh, we'll run the Smart Life app after you've um, installed it and created an account. So then you can either use the plus button or add device. Add device. And then we go to lighting and light source Wi-Fi. Then we add the Wi-Fi password and click uh, next. Now we turn the bulb on to confirm that it goes into blinking mode and it is blinking so we confirm that and we confirm that it's blinking rapidly so it's in the right mode. And there we go, it's found the bulb. So now we can give it a name, so I would call it filament smart bulb I think. And now we should have full Wi-Fi control. On off. And we can control the color tone as well and the brightness. So we can dim it down. We can give it full brightness. Or we can even give it the color tone more uh, cold white or warm white or somewhere in between and I think if we dip the volume right down we should be able to see that there's two warm filaments and two cold white filaments so if we go to the one side only one side should be lit and the other side the, the other side should be lit the cold white ones so that works rather well Anyway, but that's not what we're here for today. What we want to do is we want to see what's inside this bad boy. Right, so let's see if we can somehow get into this bulb. Let's give it some support with my trusty blue tack so it doesn't go flying off the table. Um, let's see if we can first pull this little pin out the bottom. stab myself doing that. Right, so we've got this little pin out that, that normally traps one of the, the main wires coming in. So I think this is going to be destructive so we'll probably end up destroying this bit but hopefully I can replace that afterwards because I really like this bulb and uh, destroying it for no reason other than for the interest of science. But uh, I suppose that's a good enough reason. So let's see if we can, can maybe we can peel this metal back somehow. So if we can sort of nibble into it, maybe we can just peel it back. And then, uh, 
do that. It looks like it's brass, but it's not. I think it's either aluminium or steel. Well, it might be brass. Careful not to liberate any blood from my fingers. on this piece of plastic. supply for these filaments. Looks like I can see the Wi-Fi module there. Just about just about see the Wi-Fi module over there. Hopefully we can get away get rid of some of this gunk so we can actually read some numbers off of that. Now they haven't made it super easy for us. Oh this is soft. That's good. It's simply heat sink compound. So I've managed to clear most of the gunk off of the components. So it looks like the, the live supply comes in uh, through this fusible resistor and the neutral comes in on this side and they both sort of meet this little um, capacitor which, which I presume is for um, interference suppression. And then after that it uh, passes through a bridge rectifier. Okay, so it would appear that most of these components here is just to provide a 3.3 volt power supply for this little Wi-Fi module. And the um, this chip here is purely a LED linear control IC that has two PWM inputs. So they provide the PWM control over these um, warm white and cold white LED filaments. And this chip is very uh, common in normal um, smart bulbs. It's a bright power chip. And I think I've seen it before. Um, but what I don't see is the control IC for the power supply, which I assume is on the other side of the board. And I would like to put this back together again. Um, with another cap from another bulb, so I don't want to go more destructive on its arse. But um, it seems to be a buck converter with no isolation transformer. That would make sense because it's all self-contained. Uh, yeah, so this is not the power supply chip. There's a bridge rectifier coming in. And there's something underneath this board that does the switching through this inductor. And then somehow provides a nice smooth 3.3 volt power supply for this um, Wi-Fi module. And it's not a ESP uh, Wi-Fi module, it's BK something. Um, also one that's becoming quite popular with a lot of smart bulbs. That they seem to be steering away, some of them are seeming to uh, steer away from the ESP chip style chips. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's incredible. All of this fits in uh, that tiny little screw cap. Um, I don't know how they manage that. But uh, yeah, so this, um, this takes a um, PWM signal from this little module here and then controls the two channels for the warm white and cold white LED filaments. So after spending hours on the internet looking at different data sheets, I think I've sort of managed to cobble together how this thing works, kind of my attempt at reverse engineering it. Um, I didn't find the exact buck regulator chip, but another bright power chip, which I think is similar to the one used in this bulb. 
I couldn't really uh, read the numbers off of it because you had to look through the glass. But uh, I've merged the two circuits together as best as I could. So I think this is what's going on inside the bulb. So you've got uh, the mains voltage coming in through a fusible resistor. And then um, going through a bridge rectifier. A full bridge rectifier. And then being smoothed out by a filter capacitor. Then via this diode, uh, you've got this little buck re regulator chip. Similar to the one that I think is in the bulb. And that generates our 3.3 volt supply by pulsing this inductor here. And it's referenced to mains voltage, so it's not isolated. That then goes to our um, Wi-Fi module, which has two PWM channels, uh, which do the dimming for the uh, cold white filaments and the warm white filaments, uh, respectively. Um, and then... That, those two channels feed into the dimming inputs of our um, bright power uh, linear regulator chip that uh, drives the uh, LED filaments. And it's a BP5778. And uh, so what I could find about this is that it's a linear regulator um, that sort of just uh, regulates the voltage just below the peak of the, the main um, mains voltage, the rectified mains voltage. So there's a bit of headroom there, and um, it just controls the the current to the LEDs. But then the dimming is done by a PWM rapidly switching them on and off on the outputs. So uh, yeah, that's basically it. Um, the LED filaments are obviously just a very long, each LED filament is a very long series string of um, uh, LEDs connected in series, and they're they're quite high voltage, maybe about uh, uh, about 270, 280 volts, all these uh, LEDs connected in series. And uh, that's it. That's uh, sort of me, my attempt at uh, reverse engineering it. Quite clever, really, how they can do it with so few components in such a small space. And that's it, really. It's an interesting bulb. And um, I'll try and put it back together so I can reuse it. Alright, so I salvaged another cap from another uh, bulb, cheap LED bulb, and I think we might be able to get this on here. So that might work. Um, I would like to put some protection around here from the metal, but I don't think I can put this back. Um, I think this is some sort of heat conducting compound. But what I thought I'd do is I'd take some PTFE tape because it's it's very heat proof and this is the really thick type. Uh, it's not insulation tape, but I think this is going to work. So I'll wrap this around here a couple of wraps and it'll just provide a bit of extra, um, a bit of insulation, not, not the best insulation, but it's heat proof and that's what I'm interested in. Just uh, prevents uh, something from stopping the cap, stop uh, touching the cap. It's not an ideal solution, but I think it's going to work. it in. Now we can run a bit of solder along there and I think a bit of super glue. It's not a perfect fix but I think it's back together again. So let's uh, solder that there with a dot of solder. And we run some super glue along the edge so it seeps in there and I think the bulb should work again resurrected from the dead. I've put a small drop of flux on there, so hopefully it'll take some solder. Woohoo! Perfect. I'll give it a quick, quick test first to see if it works. Uh, 
So it's not glued on yet, so we'll have to be careful. Let's see if that works. Well, it's lighting. That's a good sign. And it's back in pairing mode. So it's ready to be paired again with the network. So not completely destroyed. So any, anyway guys, if you like these sort of tear down videos and sort of reverse engineering videos, let me know and uh, maybe I can make some more in the future. I thought this was an interesting smart bulb and um, be interesting to see how the technology progresses and how things get miniaturized even more. Anyway, thanks for watching and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Bye.